Technology executive Larry Ellison is America's third richest man. His company, Oracle, makes a widely used database. It helms everything from online banking to airline reservations. It is even used by NSA. But Oracle is in a legal battle with Google, accusing the online search giant of using its programming language without permission. I sat down with Ellison last week at his vast compound south of San Francisco. We spoke about many things, including Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin. I think most of the I think I, I, the only problem guys I have tr trouble with are the Google guys. Uh, really? The, the uh, so yeah. Larry and Sergey, you have trouble with? Uh, I, Larry specifically. Uh, Larry's. Uh, I think. I Larry th per se. Yeah, Larry per se. Why? Because he makes the decisions over there. He, run he runs that company. No one else runs that company. Uh, and they decided, let me be very clear. They t when you program, when you write a program for the Android phone, you write it, you, you use the Oracle tool, or Oracle Java tools for everything. And at the very end, you press a button and said, convert this to Android format. We don't compete with Google. We don't do anything Google does. No. We, do, we just think they took our stuff and, and, yeah, that, okay. and that was wrong. That's a completely separate issue. But, but I mean, you, you think they're evil. Uh, I think what they did was was uh, absolutely evil. And you blame Larry Page? That's 100% Larry Page. So if what they did is evil, that makes Larry Page evil? No, it makes what he did evil, which is quite different. And I know his slogan is, don't be evil. Exactly, that's what and, I'm talking about. And, and, uh, and I think he slipped up this one time. But uh, the... Um, so he's a good guy, except this one time when he... I, this really bothers me. I don't, I don't see how he thinks you can just copy someone else's stuff. It really, it really mm -hmm. bothers me. Let's talk about Steve Jobs. Yeah, my best friend for 25 years. What is it about him? You, you, we recognize the fact that he loved Apple, he wanted to make Apple great, and he did. But what was it about him that enabled him to do it other than he worked hard? He was brilliant. I mean, he was our Edison. He was our Picasso. He was an incredible inventor. So what happens to Apple without Steve? Well, we already know. What? We saw, we conducted the experiment. I mean, it's been done. We saw Apple with Steve Jobs. We saw Apple without Steve Jobs. We saw Apple with Steve Jobs. Now, we're going to see Apple without Steve Jobs. So you're shorting Apple? I'm not shorting Apple. I, I, I think I like Tim Cook. I mean, I, I, li I think there are a lot of talented people over there. You just but Steve said is irreplaceable. Apple is going down without Steve Jobs. That's, a, uh, that's exactly what you said. Yeah, they Apple are. is going down okay. without Steve Jobs. Okay, I'll say it publicly. He's irreplaceable. Yeah, they, I don't see how, the, how they can, how they can, they, they will not be nearly so successful because he's gone. Did you watch him die? Uh, close, close. Well, you know, was I there, there at the, la the, no, the no, last No, 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 did you watch him go through this? I saw, I, I would describe, you know, I would go over there all the time and the walks, we always would go for walks. We'd always go for walks. And the walks just kept getting shorter mm. until near the end we'd walk, kind of walk around the block or maybe, maybe four blocks, something like that. And, and um, you just watch him getting weaker. And this is the strongest guy I knew. This was absolutely the strongest, most willful person I have ever met. And after seven years, the cancer even wore him out. And that was what it was. He was just tired of fighting, tired of the pain. And he decided, shocked Lorraine, shocked everybody, that the medication was going to stop. He just pulled off the meds, I think, on a Saturday or a Sunday. And by the following Wednesday, he, he was gone. If you love someone, it's hard to see them do that, although it's their choice. Yeah. I, it had reached the point where he was, he was definitely suffering. There's just mm. so much pain. There is no other Steve Jobs? No. The, um, my eulogy began, you know, I guess we're all told that no one's irreplaceable. Mm. I don't believe that. <laughs> I just don't. Well said. Where do you come down on what NSA is doing? Well, the great thing is we live in a democracy. If we don't like what NSA is doing, we, always, we can just get rid of the government and put in a different government. I think, uh, actually, we've been collecting this information for so long, and, and long before NSA was collecting it. Let me tell you, tell you who was collecting it. American Express. 
uh, Bank of a Visa, all of your all of your credit card data, we have and all of your all of your financial records. This whole issue of privacy is utterly fascinating to me. Who's ever heard of this information being misused by the government? In what way? Well, Not I just hear you clearly. You're saying whatever the NSA is doing is okay with me. It's great. I wish. Yeah, it's great. It's essential. By the way, President Obama thinks it's essential. It's essential if we want uh, if we want to minimize so, the kind of strikes that we just had in Boston. Uh, it's absolutely essential. And, and, but but what point would it be alarming for you in terms of government surveillance? At what point would your red line be crossed? Um, if the government used it to do political targeting, if the Democrats used it to go after Republicans. Uh, if the Republicans used it to go after Democrats. In other words, if it became a, uh, we stopped looking for terrorists and we started looking for people with, um, for, on the other side of the aisle. It's so interesting, Charlie, to hear from Larry Ellison because he does so few interviews. It's yeah. rare to hear from him, especially on this NSA issue. So does he, does he think we deserve privacy? Uh, he doesn't, well, he, I think he probably does think there's some point, but I could not get him to tell me where the red line was. You know, it's yeah. a battle that everybody talks about, the debate. In fact, Hillary Clinton said in her speech that one of the things she's going to make a speech about is the balance between security and freedom and privacy. Mm -hmm. and, and he was seemed to be trying to make the case that, look, long since American Express Visa, people have been collecting personal they data. They a lot on of stuff customers. there. He said, if you want to know who really knows who you are, go to those file companies when you apply for a credit card. They have more information than you can ever imagine. That's great. All right. I know we're going to hear more from him, right? Interesting yeah. guy because he's been there for a long time mm -hmm. and he's the third richest man. And the fact that Steve Jobs wanted him to speak at his service mm -hmm. says volumes about uh, the relationship between the two of them. Yeah.